Okay, so this is going to be the last lesson for radicals and rationals, and what it's going to be is solving. You're going to solve radicals and you're going to solve rationals. In 20-1, you had a unit on solving radicals and you had a unit on solving rationals, and you had to do it algebraically. In 30-1, if you are asked to solve a radical or a rational, you are not going to do it algebraically. You don't know how, or sorry, you don't need to know how. You're just going to graph it to get your answer. So I'll show you what I mean. When you're told to solve a radical, um, here's the radical that they give you. So the square root of 3x plus 2, it's equal to negative 6 plus x. What you did in 20-1 is, remember you had to isolate the radical, so the radical had to be on one side of the equal sign, everything else on the other side of the equal sign, and then you had to get rid of this radical by squaring this side and then squaring that side. And when you square both sides, your radical would be gone and then you would isolate x. We're not going to do that in 30-1. You don't need to know how to do that. When you are asked to solve, it wants the x-intercepts, right? Or the x values. So what you do is you just punch that into y1 on your calculator and you punch this into y2. That is the intersect method and that's going to be the easiest method to solve. So let's solve this using the intersect method. So take out your calculator. In y1, let's put in the square root of 3x plus 2. And then in y2, negative 6 plus x. When you graph this, that would be your graph. The solution is the intersect of the graph. So you'd need to change your window uh, because we know it's going to be past, the solution is going to be past x is equal to 10, right? So I would change my window maybe to 20. And I'll go scale factor of 2. Then second trace, you're looking for an intersect. You get close to the intersect and you hit enter three times. So the solution to this, the x values that would make this equation valid uh, to the nearest tenth would be x is equal to 12.2. That is the solution. Do you want a question like this on your exam or on your diploma? Because it really is just punching this into your calculator and getting the intersect. Sometimes students, they try to, like I said, uh, algebraically solve this. Don't ever do that. If you're asked to solve, right, if you're asked the word solve, it wants the x uh, values is what the solution would be. It's always going to be a numeric response, this question. The second method, which I don't recommend doing, but I will tell you what it is, it's the zero method. So I'll show this just one time. We're going to take that exact same equation. So square root of 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 6 plus x. What the zero method would be would be to bring everything to one side of your equation and have a zero on the other side. So let's bring everything to the left. We would have 3x plus 2 um, plus 6 minus x. Right? If everything went to the left, you then only have something to type into y1, and the solution for this is going to be the zero, right? If you've got a zero there, that's going to be the solution. So let's punch this into our calculator and see what you would get. We have to get the exact same answer. So I've got this guy. Make sure you scroll outside of your radical sign and then add your 6 minus x. So you only have a y1. Now we have an intersect here, and that's going to be our solution. So second trace as 0. 
So you go left of the zero, go right of the zero, and then enter. And there's your solution. Same solution, 12.2. So you could choose either method. If we look at the next question, so I just want you to do one. Make sure you can get the answer. If I was given this question and it says solve this radical equation, I am not going to bother doing the zero method. I'm just going to punch this into y1 and this into y2. I'm not going to bother bringing things to one side and I could make a mistake, right? I'll have less of a chance making a mistake punching that into y1 and that into y2. So just take a minute, get that into your calculator, get the intersect. Write it as an ordered pair. So the intersection point is, so get that as an ordered pair. When it says solve though, they're asking what is the X value in solving. When we're done the lesson, this one, if you want, you could do for practice or for homework, because there will be no homework on this. So again, Y1, don't do it right now, Y2. And the answer is right here. So just make sure you're able to get that. Were you getting X is 13, Y is 8? Okay. Okay, that is solving radicals. Right, you took a whole week on doing that in 20-1, 30-1, you put in your calculator. The same thing is going to be for rationals. If I give you a rational and I tell you to solve it, so just write this off to the side. If you're given a rational and you're told to solve it in 20-1, I don't know if you remember, you had to do common denominators. So if this had an X plus one in the denominator, we had to get an X plus one down here, multiply both numerator and denominator by X minus one or X plus one. Do you remember all this? Then we canceled. You don't have to do that in 30-1. Solve Y1, Y2. Just make sure on that right-hand side, if you have a binomial or more than one term, make sure it's in a bracket. Students, for whatever reason, have a harder time uh, punching rationals into their calculator. Radicals, it's easy for them. Rationals, if they forget brackets, you get the wrong answer. So let's punch this one in. The second one's actually even more complicated to punch in than this one. But let's punch this guy in. So x plus 6. numerator x minus 1 divided by the denominator x plus 1. I had adjusted my window, so I'm just going to go back to a 10 by 10 window, zoom 6. Your solutions are the intersects. So there would be two solutions to this um, graph. You'd have a solution here, and you'd have a solution here. So find your first solution, which would be if they want it to the nearest tenth, x is equal to negative 4.4. And the second solution would be x is equal to negative 1.6. And then you'd have your two solutions. Uh, they wouldn't be able to give you this one in a numeric response because remember, you're going to have positive values. So they're going to make sure for numeric response which would be on your exam, that this solution is going to be um, in quadrant one. The last question for this would be this guy. So this is sort of a, the hardest question that you'd be asked to solve to be able to punch this in. So take a minute, see if you could do this one. 
the right hand side so you should make sure that's in a bracket and the denominator's in a bracket. The left hand side is going to be 2 minus and then make sure this is in a bracket. on your exam you'd get one. You'd either get the radical or you'd get the rational. Make sure that you have two solutions. So this should be um, what your graph looks like. And you're going to have one positive solution at 1.1. Actually, it asks the nearest hundredth. So x is equal to 1.13. No, 1.14. So make sure you get that. And then this solution over here to the nearest hundredth, you should be getting negative 3.34. Before I give you the practice test homework, there was one last question in the note package that we didn't do. It was towards the beginning of the note package. And it was this guy here. Okay, so this question here, how do you tell if that's going to be a VA or a whole, right? Because if it is a VA, there'd be no common factors. We don't know what this is, right? So if it's a VA, this guy cannot be X minus 3. If this was X minus 3, what would it be then? Would it be a whole or a VA if this is X minus 3? It'd be a whole, right? So what it says is it says this function here, and it doesn't give you this factor up here. It says it is a graph with no vertical asymptotes. So what would this have to be if it cannot be a VA? It's got to be the whole, right? If this cannot, if there's no vertical asymptotes, we know that uh, X cannot be equal to 3. It has to be, if it can't be a VA, it's got to be a whole. So there's got to be a whole at X is equal to 3. What that means is in order for there to be a whole, there must be a common factor. And that means this must be x minus 3. Because we're told if it's not a VA, it's, we know it's got to be the whole. A whole has to have a common factor, and that would be your whole there. Okay. So let's answer a couple of things about this. Um, we know that the equation now is g of x is equal to 3, x plus 2, x minus 3, x minus 3. That's the equation. We know that because there's a common factor, that that's the whole. that x is equal to 3, and we need the y value of the whole. Remember the whole, it's a point of discontinuity in your graph. In order to get the y value on the whole, and this was a question on your quiz, what you do then is you simplify your rational, and you're going to have g of x is equal to 3x plus 2, and you substitute in your x value on the whole to get what the y value is. So that would be the g of 3 is equal to 3, 3 plus 2. The g of 3 is equal to 3 times 5. And the g of 3 is equal to 15. 
this gives you the coordinates of your hole, right? This is your x value, and your corresponding y value on the hole would be 15. So there's a point of discontinuity at 3, 15. If you were to say, if they said to you, what would the simplified rational expression be? The simplified rational expression, how you would write it, would be g of x is equal to 3. So it would be essentially this guy, 3 uh, x plus 2. But then you always have to say comma, and you tell me what x cannot be from the original equation. So x cannot be equal to 3. So if you're ever asked to give a simplified rational expression and you forgot that, you would not get the mark for it. Okay, x and y intercept. So let's quickly do the x and y intercept algebraically so you would know how to do this on a test. If you are finding the x intercept, remember, let y equal zero. The easiest equation to do, you could actually do the original or you could do the simplified one. I would always choose a simplified one. That's going to be the easier of the two equations. You're going to get the same answer. So we've got y is equal to, I'm just going to change uh, g of x to y. So y is equal to 3x plus 2. And if we're going to let y equal 0, 0 is equal to 3x plus 2. You could do one of two things from this point. You could distribute the 3 in, which actually most of you would do, so let's do that. 0, or you could divide both sides by 3 to get rid of it, but most of you I know would do this. And then solve for x. Algebraically solve for x from this point, and that's going to give you the intercept. So subtract 6 from both sides, and you're going to get negative 6 is equal to 3x. Divide by 3, and you're going to get an x-intercept of negative 2. That's going to be your x-intercept. Okay, let's find the last intercept algebraically. Y-intercept. Let x equal 0. Again, you will get the same answer if you punch it in the original or if you punch it in the simplified. It's easiest to punch it in the simplified. So the simplified was 3x plus 2. We are going to let x equal 0. That's going to be 3 times 2, which is going to give us a y-intercept of 6. Okay. And that would be everything that they could sort of ask for this question. So that's it for the unit. Let's, um, I'm going to give you some questions in your practice test. So the practice test is on 487. And I just want to see if I've changed. So open up to 487 and just let me have a look. make sure one for okay I do not want you to do so circle question one on page 487 uh, on the next page circle questions four five and numeric response one the page after that numeric response two eight and numeric response three don't do ten and don't do numeric response four twelve thirteen and fourteen and i just want to see And then numeric response six. 
and you star numeric response six. Because you should have seen a question like that and you really need to know that one. What I want you to do for numeric response six, can you look at that um, here? Let me just bring it up for you. One of them you need to factor. So I don't like the way they've written it because they would never do this on a test, but I'll show you what the book has done. So for numeric response six, um, you guys look at the four equations. I don't know if it's going to let me get there, but look at the four equations. And the last equation, it's got that x squared plus 2x minus ax minus 2a. Do you see that for the four different equations? You, they want that to be factored. You have to factor that numerator. And what it should be, it's not going to let me do this. Um, you're just group factoring that. So if you want, I'll give you the factored form of that. The factored form of that x squared plus 2x minus ax minus 2a, it's going to be x plus 2 and x minus a. Why is this not letting me get there? Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's letting me get there now. So this guy here, I don't know why they gave it to you in this form, but that could be group factored. And what this should be is x plus 2 and x minus a. And the denominator was x minus a. And then you know if you have something common, that that's going to be your whole. You're going to have a whole at x is equal to a. And then you would look at your questions. And there's actually only one of these that has a whole, which would be this guy here. And it says that's your a value. That would be the answer, right? X is equal to a. You still want to talk about horizontal asymptotes, things like that, though. You could work on that. And then I'm, I've got one more review package that I will hand out.